My name is Stefano Bertuzzi. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at the American Society for Microbiology. And I'm joined here on stage with uh, Dr. Colleen Kraft, who is the Associate Professor in the Department of Medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases and uh, also the Director of the Clinical Virology Research Lab uh, at Emory University. She's known in, in the world for many things, but one of those for being the physician leader in the effort at Emory Hospital to care for the Ebola patient a few uh, years ago. So thank you, Colleen, for your work there. Most importantly, Dr. Kraft is our president at ASM. Welcome, Colleen. Thank you. And also, I'm joined here uh, with our president-elect, uh, who will start her service as president in a few weeks. You ready, Virginia? I'm trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Virginia Miller is a research professor at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and she is, uh, studies the molecular genetics of uh, many or several uh, gram-negative pathogen. Right now, I think your lab is mostly focused on Klebsiella pneumonia, but you know what my favorite of the bugs that you study is, has actually been your simia, your work there has been amazing. And also Salmonella and many others. So welcome, Virginia. Thank you. And I also would like to recognize in the audience, who's trying to hide in the last row there, our president-elect designate, Dr. Terry Kohler from Houston. A round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we're here to talk briefly with you about where ASM is going and, uh, most importantly, what is the strategy that we're trying to flesh out for the future of the microbial sciences. And uh, Colleen and Virginia will speak to this. I also want to say, before I forget, that in the back of the ASM booth, there is a corner, a stand, uh, where we're there to receive input and feedback on your opinions of what you think ASM should be doing in the future. So you can ask questions here, but there's also an other opportunities in the booth back there. With that said, uh, Colleen, let's start with you. So tell us briefly what has been the journey of the Board of Directors in thinking for the future and for the future of ASM and refreshing the strategic plan. Yeah, so I think um, one of the things to think about is that uh, it's pretty awesome, I think, that during this time where there's been so many changes that we're actually really trying to look forward. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned during the pandemic as an individual, but also within our profession, that the time is now to really be thinking about the future. Things are going to keep changing um, differently than we thought that they were, different, differently than we can predict. So I think, again, because you're here, and I appreciate the individuals that are here, you're actually thinking during a time that most people are just trying to catch their breath. And I think one of the things that's really impressing me about the strategic roadmap is now is the time to figure out what we need to be ahead of, what we need to be thinking of. So in terms of the actual process of um, ASM's um, strategic roadmap with the board of directors, we looked at three scenarios. And um, if you wanna sort of have a reality check, have somebody present to you three scenarios, one being optimistic, one being cautious or sort of in the middle, and one being more catastrophic about the future of your organization. You may not recover from this exercise. I was really shocked that there are parts of the way that our world is going now that are in all three. And so I think it's really important for us to identify and highlight, um, you know, looking through those scenarios um, that were very well done and figuring out where are the parts that ASM as a society needs to be, where can we be proactive, where can we be, be supportive. So the board of directors have been considering this um, you know, for many months now, trying to sort of get to the point. And I also want to reiterate what Stefano said, which is we need your voice in your society. So if you're here now doing this, um, watching this, but if you're going to watch this later, we need to hear from you. This isn't going to work if not all voices are heard. Thank you so much, Colleen. So what I'm hearing is looking forward and I'm hearing being proactive. On this front, Virginia, you're going to be leading a group of notable scientists, you know, looking exactly at this. Can you tell us what the Miller Group will be doing? 
Stefano named that committee, by the way, not me. Um, <laughs> but yes, we have a really great group of people to uh, sit down and think about how we can be proactive and intentional about how we want to face the future and make an impact on the future. Um, and our, our goal is to really sit down and think about that. I think um, if, if you're an architect, you think form follows function, and we have to think about that in terms of our society too. How can we best uh, structure our society uh, to deal with the opportunities and the challenges that are ahead of us? And we want to be very intentional about this and very proactive. If you think about what happened with COVID, I think we did an amazing job pivoting and reacting and responding to that event, but we don't want to always be reactive. We want to try to anticipate so that we can do even better, and I think that's really the goal of what this task force is trying, trying to set us up to be able to do. Uh, Colleen, can, what Virginia just said, can you expand a little bit in telling us how? So how is ASM looking at being proactive? How does it want to structure itself in order to do what Virginia just said? Yeah, I think when you think about making big changes or at least sort of aligning, you start with strategies and priorities. And so really that's what ASM has been working on. We cannot boil the ocean, nor should we. I think this is one of the things that I love about science is that we're inherently collaborative, or we should be. Um, and we want to be collaborative and we want to help essentially pull people together to do the best in their field, but realizing maybe ASM in some areas are supporting actors and actresses, um, and maybe in some areas we're the, we're the principal. And so really trying to figure out how it aligns with the strategies. That's why your voice is extremely necessary because we want to get this right. We want to represent the whole group. Um, there are always people that say things that are very, um, um, are the squeaky wheels, but we also want to figure out how do we um, align strategies, priorities, um, specifically some of the things we're looking at are topical, um, how we organize ourselves, how we serve the public. So are we doing the things on our website to be useful to you in the society? Things such as open access journals. I'm really proud of the work that the journals group um, really led by Melissa Jr. have been doing to think ahead about this topic. We want to be equitable, fair, but we also need to make sure that we are supporting um, even, you know, there's revenue streams that are going to be affected by this. So there's a large um, look around things sub such to, to those of us that just publish are as simple as journals, but it's a complex topic we want to stay ahead of. Thank you, uh, Colleen. Virginia, so Colleen is telling us that uh, we're doing a great job with journals and we could list a long list of programs that are truly excellent from ASM. But what you were saying before, what is your group, what will your group think about not seeing just providing a tactical response? I published a paper, so rather, how do we hold the space for the science? What's the idea that ASM is developing? How do you think it will be organized that? So I, I think, as Stefano has just sort of alluded to, we're, ASM for many, many years has really been organized around providing wonderful services for us as members, whether that's great journals to publish in or organizing meetings like this where we can connect and share our science and, and grow as, you know, as, as scientists and as people, has great education programs. But where do we have, where is the forward-looking science component of our society. And it's definitely there, but how do you find it? If you come to a website, how do you find it? If you want to participate in thinking about the future and what the needs of microbiologists are and the needs of society with respect to microbiology are, where do you find that? And I think that's something that's sort of been missing and something that, in an explicit way, and is something that we need to correct or deal with in order to be more proactive and forward-looking. And so that's one of the things that the task force is going to work on is to kind of think about how can we better um, structure the science component of our society to help us think about what priorities there are, what the opportunities are, what the needs are that ASM can help support microbiologists 
to do and to advance the microbial sciences and, and contribute to the big problems that we have in the world uh, going forward. Yeah, thank you. Let's use some, uh, some concrete examples. So we've heard loud and clear from our members and, uh, and it is quite obvious also by reading the newspaper and uh, looking at the burden of disease that the issue of antimicrobial resistance is a menace that is ha it has several layers of problems. It has a scientific problem of uh, uh, developing a robust pipeline and understanding new therapy and de delivering new therapeutics, which in some respects could be hard to, to develop for many reasons, simply as toxicity, that they uh, act at very high concentrations. And so a lot of uh, molecules get immediately weeded out because of toxicity issues and many others. But then, you know, there is an economic issue, which is a big component because you have a market failure, right? Uh, if you talk about, uh, uh, I don't want to mention the, 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 the brand name, but if you're taking one of the statins to control cholesterol, you have one pill that works for everyone, and there's like hundreds of millions of people who use that. The incentive is there, there is really there. The antibiotic is the exactly opposite, right? You develop it, you take it for a limited amount of time, and the recommendation number one is doctor. Many things. It's hard for me to. You mean take. All Don't of use it? it unless you really need to, well, yeah, right? Which, which really becomes difficult from an economic perspective. So ASM um, is really committed to uh, holding the space, and this is important because this is part of our strategic plan of building a home for the community that studies drug development and antimicrobial resistance in general. And I see actually Dr. Karen Bush in the back there who is gonna, he's leading a task force exactly to do this. Hi Karen, thank you for being here. And uh, one of the problems that we have right now is that in the current structure that Virginia was talking about, antimicrobial resistance is, wouldn't fall into any particular bucket, right? It's not a problem related of a journal, it's not a problem of a meeting, it's not a problem of an uh, education and webinar. It's really building a home for a whole area of research. So ASM, how can ASM structure itself to be able to do that? Colleen and uh, Virginia, any thoughts on that? I think it's exactly what you're saying. So we've been so used to, and I'm gonna say the word luxury, I think we've had the luxury of being really thoughtful, a sort of working in silos of doing different things. I think the recent years have shown us that like we need to sort of be organized, intentional. And so when we think about antimicrobial resistance in general, I think what, what you said is, is the easiest way and the best way to say it. You, you can, if you're a scientist working on it, that's great. That's wonderful, that's what we need. But we also need you to be interconnected with maybe economics, maybe you know, downstream effects. Would that push your science you know, um, forward faster? The drug pipeline we know is very slow. And so I think there's a lot of considerations that a scientific society that has all of these ideas in it and has members that can address these different things to sort of align that group together on the topic of antimicrobial resistance. And then what I hope is that we can use that model to do that for different topics. So it's not really just one it's not a, like a call out, it's sort of like a supporting, a, a supporting cast for the topic. Thank you. So uh, Virginia, if, uh, if the uh, antimicrobial resistance is an example, and Colleen just said we should do this for other things as well. So how do you think this could be done? You know, what units could be built and how would they be supported? Well, well you can imagine sort of a, an advisory council in in very large groups of connected disciplines and that could come up and think about well what are the what are the what are the thing where what is the direction of the science what are we missing to really push that science forward is it advocacy is it getting industrial partners is it getting other disciplines like biochemistry or bioinformatics to get more involved in our with our research and how, how can we move that forward? And then we can take that with 
uh, with the, what we have in the society in terms of services and get them activated, get the advocacy program activated. Do we really need a new journal for particular areas? This is a brand new area that needs support because there isn't a great place out there to bring people and the topic together. We can engage with the journals department. So the idea is to really have the science community tell us what we need and, and generate ideas as to how we might solve those. But then we have all these support technical services that we can tap into to really bring a plan together and see how best ASM can contribute. And sometimes what's best may be to enlist other partners from outside and to try and bring different groups together to stimulate uh, some of these things to happen. Thank you, Virginia. And so the key in this strategic plan is really that of gathering the advice from the community, from advisory council that are specialized in certain areas. And that's what the, the Miller group will look at, you know, what these areas should be, how they could be interdisciplinary structured, gather the advice, but very important is that someone needs to implement what comes out of the advice. It's the execution that is really important. And the difference from what we have now is that the execution and the implementation is structured based on the services, whether that's a journal, a meeting, or, 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 or a uh, educational program, and I can keep going. So those will remain, but there would be a structure, a scientific execution operation structure that will take the advice and will be in charge of ensuring that there is an execution on the vision by using all the various different programs and relating with outside the society of the partners, industry, um, uh, other societies, for-profit, non-profit, whatever it needs to be to make sure that the execution is at its most effective possible. This is how you build a, an infrastructure that holds the space for a community to recognize itself and can be proactive in looking in the future and not just reactive to what needs to be done. So the way that I, I view it is I think about like hospital operations as well, but instead of just, again, being a service, and I think one of the things that is inherent in what Stefano is talking about that we really can't see as, as volunteers because we don't work at ASM, is that the staff that is involved with ASM, to me, are the most fantastic staff in the world. So we have individuals that, that know some of this science, that have been trained in some of this science, that are, have familiarity with industry, that are working closely with industry, that are working overseas in our global partnerships. So what we're, what we're doing is the staff themselves are also going to help us um, work on these scientific um, areas of priority and help move those forward as well as just supporting, you know, the structure of, like you said, submitting to journals, awards, meetings. Think about also staff that will help you move the science and the understanding of the science um, forward as well. Is that a... Is that a Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, Colleen. That, that's uh, very, very helpful. Virginia, uh, with all this so cogent and logical, nothing can go wrong, right? Of course, nothing could go wrong. We are ASM. We have the best members of any society, so we can tackle any problem. And if we come together, we can do it, and we can make it wonderful for all of us. As you, as you approach, Virginia, your, uh, your group, which will convene soon, um, what do you think uh, would be your advice you know, in thinking about how these units of science should be organized in terms of what do we need to be looking for? You know, we heard many things about the interdisciplinarity, the be, keeping it current with how the science is evolving. So any thoughts you'd like to share on that? I know it's a very beginning and no decisions are made. That's a very broad question. I mean, I think we want people who, for, for these units, we want people who have a broad vision. They're not just focused on their one little question because we want to think broadly about the interaction between different groups. Um, and when you're representing a very large, you're, the units can't be too big in terms of numbers, otherwise you lose efficiency, but you need enough breadth um, and deep thinking to actually accomplish something and to reach across disciplines. Uh, so we want to kind of generate 
a series of, or a set of different large tents under the larger tent of ASM so that people can find their home of people doing related things, but different things, uh, related uh, processes. So you could think about people doing sort of fundamental science in the sense we used call it basic science, but it's not basic anymore. It's pretty sophisticated. Um, so you can think about a group of people like that, and that really spans a lot of things. I mean, it's, it's people working on molecular biology and physiology. It's people working on the molecular basis of, of pathog host pathogen interactions, all sorts of things like that. And so you can imagine a group like that, and you can also imagine people who are really much more ecologically and evolution-focused, biodiversity uh, questions like that, the bioeconomy, bioremediation, all sorts of things. But you can imagine how that might be another grouping, but yet you'd have people in very specific disciplines within that that really need to think more broadly about that group and, and what might be specific directions or needs of that group. I don't know if that's what you were looking for. No, no, for, that's but... exactly. Uh, and do you want to comment also on how, do you keep, how will we keep it updated with the science? Yeah. Well, we'll keep it updated by constantly looking at where we're going and, you know, the, the disciplines kind of come and go sometimes and there's always new directions and so we, we want to keep that, that fluid, those tents a little bit fluid. It's not going to be static, you know, we're not, it's, we have changed a lot in the last 50 years, it's probably going to change even faster in the next 20 years. Uh, so we need to constantly be kind of looking at where we're at and where the science is going and how we need to think about it maybe a little bit differently or move things around a little bit. We can't be just set in stone um, at all. Thank you. Um, we're almost up against time, but I have a question for you, Colleen. I'd like to, you to comment on uh, the aspect in this uh, uh, strategic plan of ASM as a global uh, society. Yeah, so I think that none of us um, think that we're just sort of in isolated countries anymore. And as I look uh, on this crowd, we, I see um, p various countries already represented just here. So I think you, we, we talk a lot about globalization. We talk a lot about interconnectedness. But I think um, ASM is really interested in the intentionality around that interconnectedness. Um, we all have different needs um, depending on our careers and our um, locations, but I think also we have different needs depending on where we are in the world. And so if there's um, sort of a delivery method we can use to be able to get what you need in your place, and then also be to be able to help you contribute from your place to the greater ASM, even though it's the A is American, I think, um, you know, I, I, I think really what we see ourselves is, is extremely global. And I think that's one of the things that always makes me really excited when I'm here in person that I forget when I'm not here in person is that I love walking around and just seeing people from so many places and realizing that, you know, a lot of people come here for so many different reasons. And I think, um, again, not trying to just be a service-based organization, which we want to help people get to where they go, but we also want to help um, science to also get to where it needs to be. Probably not everyone knows that ASM has more members outside of the United States than in the United States. And uh, in particular, we have a large footprint in Sub-Saharan Africa uh, where we have strong programs, especially in uh, clinical diagnostics. And so ASM is extremely well positioned to build that home that is not just an American home, but it is a global home. And also in terms of branding and presenting ourselves to the world will be very, very important in the direction that we're going. There is a question right there. Yes. I'm Arpita Bose from uh, Washington University in St. Louis. I really enjoyed this conversation. It was really refreshing to see how everybody's thinking ahead. And uh, the two things that came up in my mind as we were thinking about global, uh, uh, you know, c uh, contributors was climate change and diversity, equity, and inclusion. And these are so connected with the whole world that it just sort of popped out. And I was wondering what ASM is thinking about for these two important aspects. Wonderful. Any of you? Yeah, so I can, I can speak um, 
so we have a new um, track in climate change, and one of the things we're going to be exploring is how microbes can help us solve the climate crisis. I'm taking that line from my opening remarks from last night. Um, so we really want to leverage um, all this amazing knowledge to not only discover new therapeutics or whatever specific area you want to focus on, but also to think about climate change and Im improving our future as we live our future. Um, and then obviously um, you hit something near and dear to our heart, and I don't want to talk for you, Virginia, but um, the IDEA uh, committee, so I highly recommend you looking into that committee. Um, the last A here after um, inclusion and diversity, um, ec equitability, and is accountability. So really trying to not only be a, um, intentional about diversifying and supporting diverse groups, but also holding ourselves accountable to that work with our objectives, with our outcome data. Um, we've set a baseline for a number of these issues. So I think it's vitally important. And another thing that interconnects everyone, whether or not you're doing fundamental science, basic science, or translational or drug development or clinical science. And, and just kind of related to that, we were just at uh, the report on the workforce, microbiology workforce. And it turns out that although we have a long way to go, microbiology uh, as a profession is one of the most diverse of the, of the science professions. And I think that's something we should feel good about, but it's a starting place, it's not an end. And we have a lot of projects going on and some new ones that I think we'll be announcing soon that are also related to all of that. And the whole idea group is basically embedded in everything we're doing and in every group that we have. Um, it's a very trying to be very intentional about equity and inclusion um, as we go forward as part of our mission. Excellent. Thank you for that question. It's uh, really important. And I would, like to, I would like to add to what Virginia and Colleen just mentioned, another aspect of diversity and inclusion that is very hardwired in this concept of ASM going forward. And it's also diversity and inclusion of ideas and where those ideas come from. So by building these units that are gonna be operationalized, the strategy and the input that comes from the members, the idea, no pun, is that of making sure that this serves as a platform for everyone who has ideas and a vision for shaping the future, maybe a new area or something that surfaces to be able to be influential and executing on it. Because if you are the rich and famous, you know, in a, in a very uh, well-funded lab, in a very well-recognized institution, you, you probably don't need so much as an association like ASM to be able to put forward an idea. You may have other venues or other ways of doing. We welcome that, of course. But we also want to be there for those who may not be in those settings, but they could have brilliant ideas of what is needed. That is where an association is the most needed. And this is a concept of academic inclusion, of industrial inclusion, that our strategic plan wants to keep at its core. So that, that is an element that I think it's a, is going to be very interesting. I would like to thank our president, Dr. Colleen Kraft, our uh, president-to-be in two weeks, Dr. Virginia Miller and our president to be She's in a year. She's way too excited that <laughs> a year it's going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone for participating and remember to visit the strategic uh, plan corner. There is also a flyer that summarizes uh, very succinctly in a couple of paragraphs what we tried to talk about today. Yeah, Thank you, you so much. You can't complain if you don't participate. So feedback, go back there. Feedback, feedback, please.